Good morning, folks. Today we've got news from Earth way out into deep space. We're going to be looking at weather and a little earthquake risk as well. Well, let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com as we're finding the last 24 hours on our star quite calm indeed. That bright area has no sunspots, is releasing no solar flares. As we're going to see in 304 angstroms, that active area is really not so active. Solar wind at Earth is somewhat fluctuating, but still within calm range. So let's go to the coronal holes visible here. We expect their intensified solar wind in two to three days. Meanwhile, their IMF is right now setting a minor earthquake warning even while we're still in the super seismic drought. Eyes on the fault locations with lows spinning nearby. This one near Cali is one foreshock from going on alert. Some quick shots of last night's broad scale storm activity in the southwest monsoon. We'll fade the long wave return in favor of the lightning. Heaviest events in Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas really need that moisture in the southwest. Now let's zip out about 5,000 light years away to a cloud of dust and gases that shrouds a wonder of formation and activity inside. It has a relatively simple and non-flashy name, RCW38, and as we zoom, we'll stop at the previously best image in optical wavelengths showing the dark patches and lines, but... When scientists pointed the high-zoom infrared at the region, it peered through the colder dust and gases to reveal an incredible nursery and playground for stars as they're growing up. Coming back to Earth, we find Copernicus releasing its first data, helping the ESA track pollution across the globe in finer detail. Also have a good animation on the ozone hole at that link as well. Folks, in a splendid paper that I hope gets published somewhere other than just Cornell's preprint archive, Solar wind controls surface temperature via multiple pathways of forcing, and that would be both the traditional thermal coupling and the new science of the electrical coupling to which the IPCC has eyes closed and fingers in their ears. Lastly, folks, NASA solar physics guru warning about airplanes. He and his students measured low-energy cosmic rays and found that we are getting a high-end dental X-ray and radiation every time we fly. But that's just in gamma, X-ray, and neutrons at low energy. And they've admitted that they've missed the electrons and high-energy protons, which break DNA. And it's always more important when someone like this, with these credentials, says we are not detecting all the radiation. Radiation in the skies is more than we thought, and something to think about as Earth's field weakens and the sun lets in more and more cosmic rays. We are indeed in the dawning period of the modern cosmic ray maximum. Things are only getting rougher from here. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.50 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.